the blue pill is the paradigm that most people live by, that men have all the power, that they've always had all the power, that domestic violence is a problem that's committed by men against women only, that sexual assaults are only committed by men against women, that women don't make the same money for the same work as men. The blue pill is just swallowing all that as though it's true. Excerpt from a documentary called The Red Pill. Uh, this one caught my attention. I, I'd heard about it when it was being produced. Uh, crowdfunding and a number of uh, feminists upset that anybody would make a documentary about the so-called men's rights movement. But in Ottawa, this was interesting, uh, a week end ago, uh, the Mayfair Movie Theatre, which is one of those old, funky, independent movie theatres in Ottawa, scrapped uh, a showing of The Red Pill. Because the social justice warriors had been working the phones, working social media, and not shaking down the theater. Because the theater has done things. I mean, recently it played a documentary on uh, Holocaust denial. But the social justice warriors know the way to get at anything is to get at the sponsors. Weak need businesses that don't want to attract attention from the SJWs. So they started shaking down a number of the corporate sponsors who underwrite the Mayfair movie theater. And they told uh, the programmer at the Mayfair, the red pill's not going to be shown here. Now, I thought this was very interesting. Instead, it was shown last Sunday at Ottawa City Hall in one of the theater areas. So uh, clearly that was also a good message from the city that there can be many, many points of view, including ones that the rabid social justice crowd uh, appear to disagree with. So what is the skinny on the red pill? Well, I haven't seen it yet, but it is the product of a filmmaker named Cassie J, a CEO of Jaybird Productions and the director of the film. Uh, and she has picked up along the way a number of awards. Um, her 2010 documentary uh, won awards called Daddy I Do, which um, was uh, well acclaimed. Also a second documentary, The Right to Love, an American Family, that uh, explored same-sex marriage. But as a feminist who decided to look into the often mysterious world of the men's rights movement, this is what attracted all the attention. Now, there is a a conventional thought, and I've bumped into some of the guys from the men's rights movement, a lot of them listening to this radio show, who I'm a little skeptical of, but others tell stories that are heartbreaking as to how men so often fare in the family law courts. Uh, We've talked about this before. Men who end up as the victims of spousal violence and abuse. There is the sense that that doesn't happen to men. We find Cassie J in the San Francisco Bay Area this morning. Hey, thanks for taking our call, and good to have you here. Yes, thanks for having me, and thank you for your interest in the red pill. Why did this thing come about, and, and what was it that drove you to wanting to look at the, the issue of men's rights? Well, it was uh, March 2013, and I was searching for my next documentary topic, and at the time, my newsfeed on Facebook and Twitter was exploding with articles about rape culture, uh, largely because the Steubenville rape case uh, was going on. And uh, that was a case in Ohio where a 16-year-old girl was uh, passed out drunk and uh, two boys were on trial for having raped her. And they had uh, footage of this that was uh, circulating online to prove it. And uh, so I was actually looking into making a film about rape culture. And I stumbled across a website called avoiceformen.com. And it's a a hub for men's rights activists to um, write articles and also chat in forums about their perspective on gender issues. And at the time when I came across A Voice for Men, I thought these are the rape apologists that I've been hearing about that perpetuate rape culture uh, because they were bringing up issues of uh, discussing, well, how do women get into this situation and how were they uh, being irresponsible? And so from my feminist perspective, this was, uh, these were rape apologists. So I... I started looking to the men's rights movement and heard that they were a misogynistic hate group and and uh, 
the, they were only covered in the media a couple times in 2013, but all of it was uh, very, you know, negative and, and um, you know, a little bit terrifying hearing about the men's rights activists. So I thought, well, I will be the first filmmaker to uh, it, interview them in person, meet them in person, and, and essentially expose them. And uh, then I went on this year-long journey filming men's rights activists and realized that uh, how the mainstream media had been portraying them was not anywhere near the, the types of experiences that I had talking to men's rights activists. Now, most documentarians I've met uh, you know, are fairly balanced in terms of their appreciation of different issues, but a lot of them go into something generally with that niggling sense, you know, I'm not going to like, you know, this, I'm going to, I'm going to shed the light on this thing I don't like. Was that the case with you, with, with the overall men's rights movement when you started? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely thought, um, I, I, I thought I knew what I was getting myself into and in the film that I was going to make. And, uh, and then while I was, I, I was filming, I realized that the, the truth was very different than what I expected, and as you know, a, a ethical person with uh, you know, I like to think I have a lot of integrity, and there's no way I could make the film that I thought I was going to make when I knew that wasn't the truth. So, the, the film definitely evolved uh, as I learned more. The film has been called, you know, overly sympathetic, you know, an apologia for the men's rights movement. And, of course, that comes from the same people who believe the men's rights movement you know, is always a misogynistic effort. What is misunderstood, Cassie J., by people who rely only on the mainstream media for reports on this? Oh, well, uh, you know, I, I definitely think that labels... Uh, put up barriers between people to not really listen to each other and try to understand each other. And I think that's what's been happening with the men's rights movement is throwing around labels like misogynistic or um, women hating and uh, or homophobic. Uh, you know, that couldn't actually be farther from the truth from what I learned from the men's rights activists. Uh, so, you know, I, I think labels are a big issue. I mean, and we can see that with a lot of different, you know, spheres of, of uh, politics right now. But, uh, you know, hopefully if, if people are just willing to watch the film and have an open mind to hearing what they have to say, because there's uh, really once the film comes out, it'll be available worldwide in a couple of months online and video on demand. And, and once people can see it for themselves, I think people will realize that, you know, there's no kind of creative editing on my part to make them look any certain way. I'm just letting them speak in context, uh, their their per points of view, their perspectives. And, you know, that was something that was a, a big challenge for me while I was filming Men's Rights Activists was trying to see their perspectives because it is very different from the feminist perspective on gender. And uh, in order for me to make this film, I knew I had to understand their point of view in order to be able to relay that to the audience. What is their point of view and how is it different than feminism? Uh, so, you know, I had to go through that process of really trying to train in mind to uh, bounce between the different ideologies and, and the different worldviews. Uh, so hopefully the, the audience can also uh, reach that point of being able to see different perspectives on these gender issues. Cassie J, CEO of Jaybird Productions in the San Francisco Bay Area, director of The Red Pill. So I suspect if you had done a hit piece on the men's movement, which is pretty well conventional wisdom these days, uh, crowdfunding and raising money would have been pretty easy. Apparently it was not so easy. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I was offered uh, a lot of funding uh, during production of the film from the feminist organization and it was you know obvious that the the strings that were attached that was that the film had to um take down men's rights activism uh and you know i, I couldn't do that with what i'd been learning and, and knowing the footage that i had uh so i was adamant to uh keep creative control of the film to make the true story of the journey that i went on because i my my um process of starting to learn these men's rights issues from my feminist mindset is included in the film. And uh, so I really wanted to keep true to that story. And that's when I turned to Kickstarter last year in, in October 2015. And uh, 
it was a, a four-week campaign. In the first two weeks, we weren't doing very well, and I did send to the Kickstarter out to all my feminist contacts because that's where my contacts were with uh, all my previous films. And uh, none of the feminist um, uh, like bloggers and writers wanted to promote this Kickstarter, and a few of them wrote to me saying they, they thought this the sneak preview trailer was too sympathetic to MRAs and they wanted to see more kind of gotcha moments. And uh, so for two weeks we were uh, sinking ship and and then we had an article written and uh, by, by a controversial conservative figure, Milo Yiannopoulos. And uh, that uh, became a flood of uh, support from free speech activists and anti-censorship crusaders who wanted to support the film to, uh, to you know, have a different perspective on gender out in the world, because this really hasn't been covered yet in a film. There's never been a film about men's issues. Uh, so we're overwhelmingly successful in Kickstarter after that, and we're finally able to complete the film. Cassie J with us. Before we let you go, this uh, screening in Ottawa was one of the very early ones. Did it surprise you that uh, certain social justice activists uh, were able to prevent it from being screened at a theater quite renowned for good thought-provoking stuff? I am surprised. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the uh, I, I was trying to do a little research to figure out what happened, who was uh, threatening who, because I... I heard that Mayfair got some emails uh, from people threatening to never return to the theater and, or uh, protest the theater. And so the theater owner said that he canceled the screening for safety. Uh, so I, I can't hold, I, I mean, although the theater owner was, or the film programmer at the Mayfair was the one that chose to cancel the event, uh, he was also worried about safety. So I have to, you know, understand where he's coming from there. But also the people who were protesting the screening uh, online, they were saying, we didn't cancel the screening. Uh, if you have any issues, take it up with the Mayfair. So it, everyone was kind of pointing fingers at each other, saying, we didn't do it. It was them. And no one was really taking accountability for what is really censorship. You know, this is this is how films are censored, is they're scheduled at a theater, they're sold out, and then days before the screening, they're pulled because of uh, lobbyist uh, or, or protest efforts that uh, threaten a theater into submission. Good meeting you today. Leave us with one last thought. What did you come away with in producing or in directing this film that surprised you about the men's rights movement? Oh, gosh, there's so many things. I hope you get to see the film to see them all. Uh, but one thing... Um, well, okay, this is uh, something that really did surprise me, and I think it's good for people to know. Uh, men's rights activists are very uh, pro-women's rights and women's equality, and that was surprising to me. I, I didn't know what to expect, but every men's rights activist that I met, and I interviewed 44 people uh, in North America throughout that year, and all the men's rights activists, many of them were actually feminists to begin with. They cared about women's issues, and then they wanted to start talking about men's equality and that's when they were kind of shunned out of out of the feminist movement uh so that that was a surprising thing to learn was that all the men's rights activists i met were very much in support of uh women's rights cassie great meeting you today all the best and uh roll out of this is happening when uh, so we'll be releasing worldwide online and video-on-demand platforms like Netflix and Hulu in a couple months. We haven't announced the exact date yet, but it will be early 2017. Good stuff. Good luck with it. Thank you. Cassie J, CEO of Jaybird Productions, joining us from the San Francisco Bay Area. And The Red Pill, getting a lot of people talking about the men's rights movement. I'm John Gormley. This is 650 CKOM and 980 CJME.